Lately in my shack, I've been finding the patch cables and other cables, power cables, etc., etc., have been an absolute nightmare. I like to play radio, I like to get different rigs out, and it's quite often a real frustration when you can't find the end of the correct cable, um, you get very confused about what goes where, and there's always that opportunity to transmit into an open-ended load and destroy a final stage in a rig and whatnot. So, in this video today, we are going to be working towards trying to find some way of organizing it in my own kind of organic and crazy way. I need to apologize, it's been a while since I've made a video. Obviously, I needed to get some things done. We've had a quite strange situation when it comes to bathrooms in our house about the last 10 years, and that is that we haven't had a bathroom door. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you. Let's go have a look. I've been copying a lot of flack for the fact that our bathroom doesn't have a door for the last 10 years. So things have been a little bit slow. We do have this sliding door into the laundry, but uh, hey, makes things a bit uncomfortable. Um, but we have a door and uh, my son is very happy too, because uh, up until now, his uh, girlfriend has been lamenting the fact that uh, <laughs> they didn't have a door on their bathroom as well. So <laughs> 10 years later, we have a door. And this was facilitated by the fact that not only was it a bit, bit embarrassing to sit in the toilet, make noises while there's no door, um, it was also that uh, all the steam was coming out into the room and causing some mold issues. So I was urged into action by the, the impending doom of a mold-filled apartment. This has slowed me down on the radio front a little bit. What happened was that black door that you just saw there, I've mangled the edge of it and I was going to put a piece of strip on here to cover my sins and then I thought, well, you know what? Well, actually, I put this on and the door jammed and I couldn't get out of the bathroom. Had to ring for help and it was just a complete disaster. So I thought to myself, well, what am I going to do with this strip now that I'm not going to put it on the door? And that got me to thinking, well, I've been having a lot of struggles with my antenna system because I'm having to unplug and plug things and I've got to remember which cords go where and it's all tangling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have... This strip I've turned into a little, I guess it's a little organizer for my antennas. So I'm gonna have antennas on this one with provision for um, extra antennas should we, uh, should we make, we're going to definitely make more antennas. So provision for extras. And this is what's going to be um, where the leads for the uh, rigs and ATU and whatnot come out. So what I'll end up doing is I'll have all of these labeled care of our wonderful brother P-Touch and um, I'm not being sponsored for that, by the way. And so what we'll be, we'll be able to do is using the meter as the hub, we'll be able to organize to play with radios whenever we want to and not have to wonder which cable goes where. So that is the plan. All my rigs accessible quickly when I want to plug in the s by when I want to plug in the QDX. Bang, 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 done. I'll show you when it's all installed. And that is the labeling done. As you can see here, we go 80, 40. So that's the, eight, that's the uh, DCT, OzQRP 80 meter rig, the 40 meter rig, my Kenwood 520, the Air Spy, the QTX, and the ATU, should I use it. At the moment, my antennas are pretty reasonable SWRs without a tuner, which is, makes life a lot easier. It's one less thing I have to do, tune an antenna. And now it is time to install our antenna organizer system. I've also scavenged a number of uh, power cables so that I can leave them plugged in as well for the um, OzQRP rigs and for the QDX and whatnot, rather than unplugging and plugging, which you know over time could cause an issue. And it's just nice to be able to switch on and whatever I power up, the switch on will power up. So these all came from I used to do a lot of night work at various places and they would be throwing away old electrical stuff all the time, going into e-waste piles and any that had plugs that looked like they would be useful for me. I scavenged and I would suggest that you scavenge too because if you scavenge enough, it's a good way of saving money.
So now we just have to work out whether we have enough uh, cables. I have got BNC connectors, so if I need to make some shorter cables for uh, interconnecting all the various rigs, I can do that. But we're well on our way to having an organized antenna space. Well, we managed to uh, get ourselves a patch cable made with BNC. I, I broke out the crimping tool and uh, where's components? Uh, when I went there the last time, not only did I buy the cables, I bought a whole lot of these uh, BNC connectors. And I bought these BNC connectors because I wanted to be able to make up patch cables when I needed them or to terminate antennas. And they've, they've come in very, very handy. So I'm very, very happy that I bought a packet of 10 of those because uh, I'll be using those up in short order, the order and I'll be going to Wes to, to buy a lot more. And uh, the new microphone, I've got two of them, thank God, because one's gone flat and I didn't bother charging it. So you can hear in the background uh, the Air Spy. I'll just show you what's going so on there. So this is the uh, the Air Spy. I'll just get the, uh, the beautiful Kenwood microphone out of the way. That's my Air Spy, and I've just taped it to the side of the bench there. So we now have a cable that's dedicated. We don't need to be plugging and unplugging it every five seconds. And we're listening to the 80 meter band on the uh, Mac from 2007. And... It is sounding magnificent. And we've got, um, we're just listening to a net on 80 meters. Fortunately, um, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, CW happening down here. So, hey, I might even try and crank up a transmitter and have a look and see if anyone answers a CQ. A little bit of a progress report. Bought the wrong banana plugs as usual. Did something really dumb. Anyway, um, this is temporary slash permanent uh, <laughs> installation. So we've got, um, DC now coming out here, the meter is on, and anytime I want to power these up, instead of having to shuffle uh, my power connector from one to the other, if I want to use 80 meters, boom, we have power on the 80 meters. If I want to use the, uh, the 40 meter rig, boom, we have power on the 40 meter rig, and obviously, this powers up as well, but that's not running off the supply. If I want to operate my uh, QDX now, um, this has a dedicated power um, connector as well. Very tempted to put a switch on that so that uh, I don't have to keep plugging and unplugging it. Uh, but uh, that will happen down the track at any rate. It's a dedicated supply for that now as well. And looking up here, at the moment we have the Air Spy selected, and that goes into the uh, bottom. <laughs> of our, uh, our hub, which is our power meter. And the antenna is the V. So I know at the moment my inverted V is going to my air spy. Now, should I want to operate one of the other rigs? For instance, say I wanted the 520, okay? I could grab my 520 and feed that cable in the bottom there. And then that would mean the 520 is connected to the V. And, uh, should I decide that I still wanted to use the Air Spy, uh, what I've done is I've bought one of these. So I could actually connect my um, other antenna up, say the, uh, the L antenna could be connected to the Air Spy via this connector and I could still be using this to QSO and transmit on. So I've given myself a whole lot of opportunities. So I might just show you some of those uh, combinations. And now we can see here that the uh, the UV antenna, which is this one here, is running to the uh, Baofeng UV antenna. And we've got our L antenna, which is going to go to the top of the, uh, the hub here, which is our, our meter. And the rig goes to the bottom always, and that is the QDX. And the inverted V, which is this antenna here, because I know it's labeled there, all the antennas are on this side and all the rigs are on this side. My uh, inverted V is connected via the joiner to my Air Spy rig. So I'm now in a situation where I can very quickly configure the station however I want it. So, you know, if I heard something on 40 meters and I wanted to fire up this rig here, I would just unplug the QDX from the bottom here and I would grab this one here that's labeled 40, plug it in the bottom of the uh, the hub, and away I go. And uh, 
there's no scrambling for cables and trying to work out what goes where. So that is my new cable organization system with dedicated power for rigs and I am really happy to have a working situation that's just a little bit more um, user friendly in my own way. Now I hope you've enjoyed that short video. I'm now much more organized. Unfortunately when I plugged my QDX in and, and went to transmit uh, the cat control is working on it but it's not transmitting. And I strongly suspect that I didn't seat those transistors correctly up against the board when I put them down. I put a lot of, uh, well not a lot, but I put some heat sink compound in them and that may have been compensating for poor contact. But I strongly suspect that uh, I fried those transistors. So I'm hoping that's what it is and it's not one of the uh, surface mounted devices. So what I'll be doing is ordering those uh, Vets from Minikit stocks them, so they'll, they're a local supplier used quite often. I'll, I'll be ordering those uh, transistors, those FET transistors, and trying uh, to change them out. And I'll probably also put it on the PC and just make sure that it's not a um, control issue with uh, Linux. Um, but it's, it was working before, so I'm assuming that uh, I've fried the finals. That's the joys of homebrew. It's still receiving wonderfully, and I am certain that uh, it's a small glitch. We'll get it up and running again. This time we'll be a little bit more careful about how we see those transistors. Please like and subscribe. I am back at school working probably three days a week. I'm back at uni doing two days a week, embedded systems. So we're doing lots of interesting stuff there. So I will be throwing up some videos on that content and I probably will throw it on the ham radio playlist as well because control systems and embedded systems is something that uh, you can use to control um, circuits that will like rotate loops and tune loop antenna capacitors and all that sort of stuff all that great control stuff so um, you'll be coming along on that journey with me I probably won't be uh, advertising in, in many of the ham radio uh, Facebook areas but uh, Hopefully people that are subscribed will see the, the other videos and maybe take an interest in that aspect of what I've been doing as well. 73s, thank you if you've watched this video to this point. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.